Hey, what's good, you guys? Joss out the out here in Singapore, and I'm back one more time, one more again. Um, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about trust and the fact that you do have a choice to trust people. Now, I know that there have been so many instances in your life where people have bent over back to st- backwards to really prove to you that you can trust them. And then there have been people that are trying with their words to convince you to trust them, even though your gut is telling you, yeah, I don't know, your behavior is telling me something else. But the point being that you have a choice to trust them. And that comes down to whether you want to trust them or not. It really is that simple. I know that there have been people that um, they put the relationship above everything else. So they will forego the fact that um, they have other responsibilities everywhere else and they will show you that you are a priority. They will show you that you're important to them. And because you're important to them, they will do whatever it takes to adjust behaviors to prove that they are changing for the better, that they take you into account when they make decisions. And it's up to you after that watching their behaviors, uh, believing what they're saying, or at least trusting your gut with what they're saying to decide whether you want to trust them or not. I've been on the slippery slope of both ends of this. There have been times where I really wanted nothing more than this, trust somebody. So you know what? I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to just trust you. And even then, the choice to trust was mine. And it was up to them whether they were going to you know, rise to the occasion and prove that they really were trustworthy or not. But the point being that I can't control them, I can only control my choice. It is my choice after all. Now, the other side of that was I have been in situations where they were disloyal to me. They, tr- they chose me that, sorry, they showed me that they were not trustworthy. And even though I gave them one chance after that, I became paranoid and very, very anxious about what, what it is that they were doing. And I went the other direction, right? I chose not to trust them no matter what they said. And it became one of those situations where I was looking for proof of them not being trustworthy. And usually when you start looking for proof, you don't stop until you find what, what it is that you're looking for. Because it's always going to be a next time, a next time, a next time. You're going to keep on looking. So in those, both those instances, it was my choice entirely whether I wanted to trust them or not. Now, growing through those situations, growing through those those um, relationships where I have chosen to trust and also chosen not to trust, where I'm looking for proof or whatever, I have learned that I need to trust my gut when it comes to peace versus chaos. I cannot deal with a lot of chaos in my life. I've learned that I have a very, very low tolerance now. And because I'm very hip to a lot of bullshit, I just don't like entertaining any of this chaos. I don't like entertaining um, people in my life that create more problems than they solve in my life, right? So I've had situations where cutting off people or choosing not to trust them any longer and letting them go actually keeps me safe from harm because suddenly all the noise that they brought with them kind of disappears as well. So maybe it was uh, my ex-husband where his whole life was actually quite dramatic. He has a total of five children from five different women. I was the only person who was married to him who had a child. And then I had to deal with all of those exes, plus the exes who didn't have children and ex-wives included. So suddenly when I introduce this one person into my life thinking, oh my gosh, they love me. They like who I am. They really want to be around me, be associated with me. They're proud to flaunt me in public, all these things. I was flattered by all that, but I kind of ignored the fact that all of this noise and drama came with it. Now, nothing that I could say right now would change my decision because I think I was in the right place at the right time to learn a couple hard truths about myself. But honestly, when I let go, it was like I freed up so much space from all of the noise that was there before so that I can focus on other things. I suddenly had so much room to grow. I had so much room to do other things. Um, Where I was very, very sheltered and kind of quarantined in my own house because I wasn't really allowed to go anywhere unless the kids were with me, kind of as a witness to what I was doing to prove that I wasn't off meeting with other guys or whatever. I suddenly felt like I didn't have to answer to anyone, which meant that I could make my own decisions for myself and not have to justify or ask permission or any of those things. And that was very, very freeing. Um, I also felt like I could go through an entire day without having to hear about which ex called and what they had to say about me and my relationship and why in the hell he was entertaining these calls in the first place. For some reason, he was under the impression that telling me that he was still a very much wanted commodity would make me feel like I had to be that much better and that much more loyal. And I had to like bring my A game because he could leave me for anybody at any given moment. That was his way of trying to convince me that, you know, hey, if he's with me, I must be something because all these girls are after him at all times. 
But my choice was not to question any of those things, not to question the fact that, you know, he was still with me. I chose to trust him because I know what that rabbit hole looks like when you don't trust somebody. I went through a period with my first, um, my first fiance where I was checking behind him all the time. It was like, um, an itch I couldn't help but scratch all the time. It was an addiction. I could not leave his phone alone. I was constantly looking over his shoulder. I was constantly listening in very carefully from the other room to any of the conversations he was having. I mean, I knew he was cheating, but I wasn't strong enough to leave him. I wanted to torture him instead. And it was torturing me more than it was torturing him. So eventually what I found was I had chosen not to trust him, but rather than use that choice as the reason why I was going to leave, because I didn't want that un- oh my gosh, the unending chaos, I chose to stay there anyway and hold it over his head that he was not that great in the hopes that he would change for me. That's not what happened. So I'm going to tell you one more time, the choice to trust somebody, the choice to not trust somebody, that's entirely up to you. But once you make that decision, you need to go along with the rest of your life as well. If you've chosen not to trust somebody, why would you keep them close to you? Why would you want that constant nagging feeling in the back of your head like, I know he's not trustworthy or I know she's not trustworthy. I need to check behind everything she's saying. You don't need that ex- to extend that kind of energy for anyone. Once you've decided that you don't want to trust that person, you need to let them go. Same on the other hand, if you've decided you want to trust somebody, maybe you've had an infidelity in your lifetime, in your relationship, and you're trying to work through the infidelity, but it's hard. Maybe you're not the one who cheated. Maybe the other person is the one that cheated. So it falls to you to give them the benefit of the doubt that when they say they've changed, they really have changed. It falls to you to really prove the fact that you are choosing to trust them one more time in order for you to make this relationship work. But once you commit to that decision to to trust, that choice to trust, you need to commit. If you're choosing to trust somebody, you need to give them the benefit of the doubt. You need to let them make that mistake again on their own instead of controlling the situation and being paranoid about it. It's going to be hard. It's going to be very, very difficult. But once you make the decision, you've got to commit. Same thing on the other side. If you've chosen not to trust somebody, why would you ever keep someone around who is not trustworthy? Why would you keep them close? Maybe it's a family member that you have no choice about. Maybe they're in the same household that that you're in. They live with you. But if you don't trust them, you can, at all costs, avoid contact with them for the most part. It is possible. I've lived in a house where, you know, when people come and go, when they come, I am on my best behavior. I walk on eggshells, but I avoid being in the same room with them as much as possible. And when they're gone, I get to be myself again. I've done that before. So remember, the choice to trust is entirely your own. But once you decide, you need to commit to it. You can't go back and forth. You can't be wishy-washy about trust because it's very, very crucial to building intimate relationships. And it comes with a lot, a lot of chaos if you're not ready to commit. Once you commit, give them that one chance. And if they blow it, then they blow it. You need to be ready for that prospect as well. You can give people chances all you want. But in the end, it's up to them whether they rise to the occasion or fall flat and disappoint you. So you've got to be ready. You can't control everything. I hope this helps you guys. For those of you who needed to hear something about trust today, yeah, I hope it helps. And if you have any questions or concerns or comments, as always, please drop them in the comments below. I'll get to you as soon as I can. But in the meantime... Y'all stay safe. Be kind and compassionate as much as you can. But once you choose, commit to it, please. All right, you guys, I love you. I'll catch you later.